Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna try this again. Uh, but Kant was the first one who settled the debate, saying that okay, guys, both exist. The innate capacity, right, and sensory experience, both exist. Okay, but and also not just they exist independently, but they they also have to act together. Mm-hmm. In order for us to acquire knowledge, it's not just that the knowledge or content of reality is, you know, passively received by the senses. It's not like that. Okay, we gain that information through senses, but rather that information is actively shaped by the mind. Mm. Right? That was, whoa! That's crazy. Everybody was like, "That is crazy." <laughs> but. You know, the reason Kant is so important in philosophy is that because of this breakthrough idea, there's still, still a lot of discussions that are, you know, uh, that try to challenge the idea of Kant, right? Still occurring in the framework of his his ideas it's not far from it right i mean he's, yeah. he's that much influential i'm not saying that everything that he says is correct he's, it's going to be challenged you know one day um meaningfully but not yet not yet a lot of discussions that we're having is still not far from you know his framework mm-hmm. you know yeah. So yeah i mean the things seem to, to shift drastically mm. but some things take centuries until we arrive at a better oh yeah dude. solution or mm-hmm. offer a better alternative to the mm-hmm. current known system mm-hmm. and that's the power of philosophy and you know the natural sciences and all the other things that we arrive at a more mm-hmm. seemingly accurate conclusion about what reality is and what constitutes it mm-hmm. and there's an invaluable <clears throat> I I lack the word but there's there's a necessary stepping stone in all the things mm-hmm. leading up to that. Oh yeah, know? for sure. Absolutely. From Socrates all the way up to now and this, you know, that excludes and includes mm-hmm. a lot of philosophers, of uh, people that weren't philosophers mm-hmm. have a huge impact on history and the right. way we can then engage with reality and try to find a better solution Mm -hmm. and not necessarily that there's even a better solution there's just alternate solutions for the time period and cultural period you live in which is more of a kind of even a postmodern thing to say you know we're based in a time period historically culturally Mm -hmm. geographically right which then impacts the ability for us to engage and understand the world we live in Mm -hmm. which is also a part of the evolutionary process things are embedded upon us Mm -hmm. you know physiologically and then also emotionally by the yeah. place we live in mm-hmm. yeah and then you know another uh really big distinction that we need to make of uh Kant's view from his you know predecessors that okay he's he's he acknowledges uh innate capacity and you know you may think automatically that oh that's like metaphysical mm-hmm. but it's not because okay he he, he acknowledged the uh the, you know inner capacity you know and then it, it is enables enables us to understand some truth, but um, you know, of course, within uh, the faculty of our sensibility, which is like time and space, right? Mm-hmm. There's a limit to it, right? And that's why it is different from you know previous rationalist metaphys you know uh, metaphysicists <coughs> saying that you know pure reason has the power to understand. And grasp the mm-hmm. mysteries of universe. That's what you know. Metaphysicists used to argue, and Kant saying that okay, I I agree with you guys on you know innate capacity, but I mean there's a limit to it. Yeah, we we don't have any cap- capacity to understand the universal truths, mm-hmm. you know, and is bound by time and space. So that's why it is so different from, you know, uh, the previous metaphysics. And in my opinion, that's why his view finally, you know, escaped the essence of metaphysics that Locke couldn't do. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. 